you members and welcome to today's webinar. Today we will be giving you a brief introduction of Independent Market Solutions IMS and then focusing on one of our new partners on the IMS platform, Beyond Floods, a division of NatGen Flood. My name is Jason Ernest and I'm president and CEO of IAMB. I will be moderating today's webinar. I will be introducing you shortly to Chad and Naomi from Beyond Floods. But before we do that, let me start with a couple logistics uh, about today's webinar. First, the webinar today is being recorded and all participants will be provided the slides that we are presenting during the webinar. So please do not feel that you have to capture everything during the webinar. You'll have the ability to go back and listen to it or have the slides that uh, we are presenting. Also, if anybody in the agency is not able to attend and you think there would be value, they will have ability to access the recording. Also, as I mentioned, everybody is on mute for the webinar to allow ease for the presenters today. We will be collecting questions uh, throughout the webinar from, from participants. So at any time, if you wanna submit a question, please do so via the chat feature on this webinar. We will be monitoring that where we have the opportunity to present those questions during the webinar, we will do so. And also at the end, we will be devoting some time at the end of the webinar to address any questions that are outstanding. So again, please submit any questions via chat. Uh, with that, let me start with just a quick overview of the IMS platform, an explanation why IMS is doing this and, and how we came to be uh, a market access provider for our members. About a year ago, we surveyed membership. We do it frequently to find out what concerns our membership has. And surprising to us, the number one concern raised by our members was the need uh, by our membership was carrier representation and advocacy, meaning, and we, we explored this a little bit further, our members, generally smaller sized agencies had indicated that they felt they were losing a little bit of a voice with the carriers, that there was continued pressures on them as an agency to provide premium volume to the carriers. Um, and as an appointed agent of a carrier, there, there were those pressures and just desires of the carriers to be number one carrier within the agency. This despite the fact that a lot of our members have multiple, sometimes 10, 15 direct appointments with carriers. The result of this feedback from our members was IMS, providing a market solution for IMB members that helped alleviate some of these concerns. So let me explain a little bit further. The first point is IMS is a national footprint. This is not just IAMB in our three states of Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Delaware, but instead it is a 14 state uh, cooperative of state associations that are providing access through the IMS platform. And this will be updated. We are currently onboarding our 15th state. So we have reach. This is important from a state standpoint, and that is a collaborative effort, something we are all working towards. Uh, we look to expand this even further and have the majority of states on the IMS platform. But from a carrier standpoint, this also provides reach for them as well. It gives them access and you see the numbers of, of independent agents within each of these states. It provides carriers access to these member agencies that they might not otherwise have. So again, IMS is a multi-state cooperative, attractive both to the members within it and to the carriers that are participating. So some details, what exactly is IMS? How does it work? First and foremost, it is an IAMB exclusive member only benefit. You must be a member of IAMB. This is something that we have exclusively put together for our members. So as a member of IAMB, you have access to this benefit. The second point, there is no direct appointment with the carriers. And this leads to some confusion sometimes, both for our members and for the carriers that are participating. But let me explain you act as a sub-producer of IAMB. IAMB has the master contract with carriers through IMS and you are acting as a sub-producer. So it gets to that point I mentioned earlier, uh, the pressure points that some of our members feel when they have an appointment with a carrier and, and some of those demands and requirements that come as an appointed agency of the carrier. Those are eliminated again because you are not directly appointed with carrier, you are a sub-producer of IAMB. We'll talk about that a little bit further as well beyond floods. Because of that, that lack of an appointment, there is low to no volume requirements as opposed to what you may see as an appointed agency of the carrier. 
extremely competitive commission rates. Despite the fact that you were not directly appointed, you were still receiving competitive, oftentimes street level commission rates that you would as appointed. So carriers are looking to compensate as they would, despite the fact that you're not directly appointed. Very important, there is no fees for participating. We are aware of other market access programs where there are fees involved. There is absolutely no fee involved for participating in this program. Um, and likewise, no restrictive contracts. We are aware of some of the contracts out there for this type of arrangement. And sometimes you give up ownership in your business. Sometimes it is very difficult to terminate the relationship and pull out a sub such an arrangement. And that is not the case here. IMB has reviewed those contracts. We have no interest in putting anything like that in place. Uh, this is very agent forward, agent centered and allowing you access to carriers that you might not otherwise get. So you may be sitting there and saying this really looks like an aggregator situation. It, it is. It, it looks like it. It's built around those principles, but I want to make sure you realize it is not an aggregator situation. This is IMB, the state association, putting a program in place that is a win win for both our members and for the carriers that are participating. How do you get uh, the ability to write through IMS? It is a very simple two-step process. It is a four-page application. Again, not an appointment process, but it is a four-page application where you're providing proof of e &O, copy of both your individual license and copy of the agency license. Simple four-page application and then executing the sub-producer agreement that I mentioned between IA and B and you as the agency. What's nice is you can complete this process just once and select the carriers within IMS that you want. You do have not have to go through this process for each and every, every carrier within IMS, and I'll redo that in a second. So complete this process. It is an application because the carrier does reserve the right to approve you. Again, not appoint you, but approve you to write through the IMS platform. So the carrier will review this and give the thumbs up to say you are an approved sub-producer of IA and B through IMS. Often that approval is quick. Beyond Floods is going to let you know within five days you will have an answer of whether you're approved to write through IMS or not. Some carriers, as I go through the carrier list, can take up to 30 days. The vast majority of the carriers are giving you that approval process. So once you do this, you are approved to write through IMS, the carriers that you choose to select and you are ready to go and run with writing business through this market access program. Currently, our makeup, and before I run through this, I want to make it a point that we are taking feedback from our members as to what you want to see within IMS, what markets, what specific carriers, what is it that you're looking to place through a market access program like that, and we will do everything we can to reach out to those carriers. And that's how we've reached the menu that we have here. So today you'll be learning more about Beyond Floods. We have our standard carriers, Travelers, Progressive, MetLife, where again, you might not be attractive from an appointment process, but it may, may be a way to get in and begin writing through these carriers, kick the tires, if you will, um, and see how they work. We have two specialty carriers, a tune on the business owner policy side and V3 Insurance, which is workers comp, very tech forward carriers that allow you to work through their platform quickly rate and quote a, a insured through their tech forward platforms. Exact same thing with Cowbell Cyber, one of our new additions, but very forward thinking uh, cyber insurance company that, that you can have access to and quickly rate on their platform and begin writing insurance. And then two specialty markets, RMS Hospitality Group and Jibna, which is personal jewelry. So if you're looking for those niche specialty markets, you don't have an access point to those, you can access them through IM3. So again, this is our initial menu. We're happy with the carriers that we have here. This will be expanding based on your feedback. To learn more, you can go to imsaccess.com. That is the holding site uh, for all states. Select your individual state, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, and you can see more information on each of those carriers. You can begin that application process. Tim Wonder at IAMB, our Vice President of Membership, manages the IMS platform. So if you have any questions, you have his contact there, either call or email with direct questions from the IAMB standpoint. But that is IMS in a nutshell. It's why IAMB is doing it. We are excited. Our members are excited. We have members that are currently writing through this and having success and accessing additional markets that they might not otherwise have. 
So with that, let me stop my share. I'm going to turn it over to Chad and Naomi from uh, Beyond Plugs, and they will give you a complete overview of their platform. Again, any questions, submit them at any time via the chat feature. We will be monitoring those and asking those throughout. But with that, Chad, the, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jason, and good morning, everyone. My name is Chad Latour. I'm the Vice President of Emerging Markets with National General. And with me today is Naomi Fields. She is one of our Flood Business Development Managers, and she'll be your direct point of contact as you guys gain access to our flood products. So we certainly appreciate you taking the time to join us. Um, we're excited about our partnership with IMS and IA and B. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into a couple of slides here just to walk through some highlights of the product. And then we will go into a live demo um, of the product doing an actual quote for you guys to see. So as you can see on my screen here, um, we have the product available in 14 states today, one of them being Pennsylvania, obviously. Um, it is a single family product at this point in time for primary and secondary homes. It is on A minus A and best rated paper. So it's on our own paper. And additional SKUs will be, will be available. So commercial lines, um, commercial coverage for um, small commercial, condo units and things of that nature. So again, right now it is single family home only. Um, this is a state footprint. The blue states is where we are today. Green is where we look to go in mid Q2. That's been pushed back a bit, which is typical with IT, right? So um, more to come on additional states, but if you would like access outside of Pennsylvania and you have a non-resident license, we can certainly accommodate that. So just let us know. Going into some of the key features of our Beyond Floods product, you can quote and bind in three to five minutes. In fact, you can actually get a quick quote in a minute or less, and you'll see how that works when we go into the demo. Um, there is no elevation certificate required, so I know you guys love to hear that. Um, you don't have the complications of the NFIP program with this product. Um, you, know, you look at the NFIP and there's anywhere from 90 to 150 questions, depending on the type of flood risk in the flood zone. With our product, it's actually 15 questions. Um, you can download deck pages with real-time instant bind. Um, we will give you a rate on every risk, um, as long as it's one that qualifies, obviously. Now, we are doing single risk modeling, so we drill down to that specific risk, similar to what you see in the homeowners, uh, with homeowners carriers. We also offer payment options, which is a bit unique. There's not many in the industry and in, in the flood business that are offering options for payment. So this gives your clients the ability to set up payment plans rather than having to come out of pocket up front. And another big differentiator with our products is we offer it in three different tiers. What that means is, and you'll see again when we go into the demo, there's what we call good, better, best is a good way to explain it. So the first tier would be NFIP-like and then going all the way up to more like HO3 type coverage. Uh, with the ability to go up to 1.5 million in dwelling and 750,000 on contents. And what we're most excited about is the flood outlook report. This is provided with every quote that you run in our system. So if you can imagine getting this level of detail specific to that flood risk with a proprietary score, it's going to help you tell the story of, you know, why the insured needs to buy flood coverage, what the risk is, rather than the broad brush approach that you see with FEMA today, whether it's in or out of the high hazard flood zone. So for this example here, you can see it's a moderate risk. It's in an X zone. It does have a, a mid range score, which again, follows into the moderate category. But you can see these red flags that even though it's in an X zone, there are risks for this property. So, and I always say, if it rains where you live, it can flood. So. It's definitely an important topic of conversation for you know, all of your insureds. And this just gives you additional talking points as you present them with the flood quote. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so Naomi can pull up our platform and you can see how to access this product. Of course, first you would have to request access as Jason alluded to earlier through IMS. So this is, after you would log into what we call NatGen Agency, you would get credentials to access this platform. This would actually bring you to this page. And from here, you would click on Service tab and connect to Flood Center. And that will bring you to our flood landing page. From there, you can bridge off to Beyond Floods. 
And that's where we suggest you go each and every time you have a float opportunity, which would be each and every time you quote homeowners. Um, if it's not competitive in our beyond floods, we do also offer NFIP, which is what we call door number one. That would bridge you off into Torrent, which is the vendor that handles our federal flood business. So you have access to that, but the real push that we're looking for is through our beyond floods, which again is the private flood product that we're focused on today. So we're going to go ahead and bridge over here to beyond floods. This is what it would look like if you clicked on beyond floods access. It brings you to this landing page. And basically here you can see, you can jump into doing a new quote. You can submit a support ticket or you can contact customer service either way. If you need assistance, we're here to help you guys out. Um, there is a on-demand webinar that you can watch. So if anybody on your team wasn't able to attend or they didn't get the recorded version of this, they can go in and watch a webinar online. And then up at the top, you can see that we have contacts. That's going to give you our customer service center, mailing address, claims information, everything you need there on one contact sheet. And then we offer a coverage comparison. And we can actually email this to you as well, or you can download the PDF version. And this shows you what I mentioned earlier, the three different tiers that are available. And we'll take a deeper dive when we go in and do the actual quote here in just a minute. And if you want to go ahead and click on dashboard, Naomi. Mm -hmm. So this is the dashboard that should come up here in just a minute. And please bear with us because we are in a demo site, so it does run a bit slower. So this is where you would see all of your activity, any quotes, any active policies where you can manage your book of business. And then we're just going to go ahead and click on new quote from this screen. And from here, we're gonna type in an address and we're gonna use a Pennsylvania address. And as you can see on this screen, as she's typing, it is a dynamic search uh, feature. So as you type in address, it will typically come up and you just click on it and it will pre-fill for you. Now, if it doesn't pre-fill, not to worry, you can type it in manually. Also, every question we ask, you can see the circle with a question mark in it. That's just a built-in help index. So you can certainly use that if you have questions. Hopefully you don't have questions on title or name. <laughs> well, we don't have a question mark at the end of the name, but. <laughs> so um, customer email address, we do ask for the customer's email address because we do uh, send billing to the customer directly. Of course, a copy to the agent. And we also, during uh, storm season, if there is a catastrophe, we do like to communicate with your permission, of course, you know, what to do before, during and after a, a flooding event. So we do use that email for that purpose as well. So property occupancy, as I mentioned earlier, it, it, it is primary or secondary, single family. No fees attached. Thank you. And then your bill, we're just making this up here for this demo. So it is important to note here too, as we go through these questions, as you answer them, it is, an intuitive platform. So depending on how you answer the questions, other questions may populate. So as you go through here, we're doing this as a slab on grade. Again, if you answered that it wasn't a slab on grade, it was a crawl space, we'll walk you through those additional questions. Um, going down here a bit more on the elevation certificate. Um, one of the other unique features that we offer is the ability to enter the elevation certificate if you have one. So you don't have to do this. This is just an additional option because there is a, a more detailed level of information on an elevation certificate than what we may be able to drill down to. And if the information provided on the elevation certificate gives a more favorable rate, you can actually use that rate. So I do say that with a word of caution, if you use the elevation certificate and we find out that you, know, you put it as a slab on grade and it's actually on a crawl space, then we would have to make that correction to the policy. So we're gonna go ahead and answer no to the elevation certificate because nobody wants to mess with all that information. So <laughs> I would prefer not to enter the EC, but again, you can do it if you wish. Um, we're doing 450,000 replacement costs. It is important to make sure you get in the habit of putting the true replacement costs in that field and also in the desired coverage because Again, we go up to 1.5 million on our product. So this is a great product to use when you have higher values because you don't have to do excess flood. 
you can get the full value in, in many scenarios with this product. So as far as a lender goes, um, we follow suit to the NFIP, so there is no wait if it's tied to making, increasing, or extending a loan. If it's a cash closing, there's no wait when there's actually a 30-day wait in the NFIP. And for our ENS version of our product, which is in Pennsylvania, there is a seven-day wait versus the 30-day wait in the NFIP. There are two states, by the way, where we have admitted um, private flood, which is Florida and New Jersey. And in those states, it is a zero day wait. Other than that, it's virtually the same product. So as you can see here, we answered very few questions to get to our quote. At the very top of our quote, you're going to see what I showed you a sample of earlier. This again is a flood outlook report that I would suggest getting access to each and every time you quote flood and present this with your quote. This again shows the risk. This particular one is in an X zone, but it is a slightly higher risk than what we saw earlier. And I cannot see that, Naomi, hopefully you can read a couple of those to give that information. That, you know, the lost records is a really good example to show somebody that even though you're in a low hazard, there's still a very high risk of you flooding. Yes, and the, there's a major kickback there. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, the, the loss records, it's one of my favorites. Um, also, how many homes in that neighborhood um, that are outside of the special flood hazard areas, your BC and X zones, um, it shows you how many of your neighbors are, per, are um, purchasing flood insurance as well, um, along with um, the, the flood risk factors that we have pulled from our system to review this property. It gives you that as well. Um, and then your, how many feet you are from a, an A or a V zone, so a regulatory FEMA flood zone, it gives you. So it's, it's kind of a good point to show your client how close they are to a, a regulatory FEMA flood zone, even though we should be um, mentioning to them if it floods, like Chad said, in your backyard, or if it rains, it, it can flood. So um, it's a, a very, very useful tool. Perfect, thank you, Naomi. So if you'll scroll down here a little bit for me. So as you can see here, if you'll go a little bit further down. So these are the three tiers that we offer. So you can see the first tier is what we call NFIP like it is our essential tier. So that's going to give you the 250,000, just like the NFIP, slightly higher contents coverage and also loss of use, which you do not get in the NFIP. So that's 5,000 and loss of use coverage. So if you're looking at this tier in comparison to the NFIP, you're at about, what, almost $200 less than the NFIP. So this is a very competitive rate. Um, again, you're getting some enhanced coverages with it. We also do default to a $5,000 deductible across the board. Um, if you would like to change that, you have that ability up here at the top where you can amend coverages. Um, we default to 5,000 because if you look at the NFIP, um, there's a deductible for building and a deductible for contents. So when you add those two together, you're what, 2,500. So we just mm -hmm. set the default at 5,000 because a lot of the private flood companies are doing a similar default deductible. But again, you can change it if you wish. It is just a single deductible, by the way. So moving up into the enhanced tier, this actually allows you to go up to 500,000 in building. 50% of Cov A for contents. It's going to give you additional um, coverages here, like special limits cap of 5,000 versus 2,500. Loss of use is actually 10,000 in the enhanced tier. So 5,000 higher than the essential. And it's also, you'll see here on some of these, the replacement cost coverage for the contents is included. And then going up to other buildings, in the NFIP, you know that if you use the 10% of Cov A for a detached garage, it actually takes away from Cov A. In our enhanced tier, it does not, it's a separate limit. And the same follows suit in the elite. So in the elite package, it goes up to 1.5 million. And I think you guys are getting the idea as you move up into the higher tiers, you're getting better and better coverage. So elite offers the best of the best. Again, the higher coverage amounts, um, also gives you the ability, and you can see where it says modifiable. 
to buy up on coverage. So for loss of use, for example, you can go all the way up to 150,000. Also, another great feature is the basement for building and basement contents. As you guys know, it's very limited in the NFIP, in fact, to about 17 items in a basement. This gives you the ability to buy up additional coverage. And then pool cleanup and repair. We default to zero, but if you have a pool, you can buy up to 50,000 in coverage. So as you scroll down, a couple of other things to point out here is increased cost of compliance. In the elite tier, you get 60,000 versus the 30 in the NFIP. Um, and you can see we even give you trees and shrubs coverage in the elite package, which you never see in flood typically. So again, the elite is more like HO3 form type coverage. So Naomi, if you'll go ahead and select, just let's do the elite tier. Nope, oh, sorry. That's all right. As you guys are doing that, a couple of questions came in kind of timely yeah, at this sure. point to address them. Um, the first is, do you follow NFIP definition of flood? And I'm sure that's in relation to a claim uh, situation, yeah, our, but. Yeah, our definition is actually broader than the NFIP. So we don't have the two mile rule. Um, okay. We can share that with you. And we'll, if we can take note of the questions, we'll make sure that yep. we address those with a follow-up, yep. maybe just a screenshot of the definition that we use. That would be great. I think the key point there though, Chad, is that you take the broader approach. So Correct. I'm sure that's where the question is coming from. You touched on it, but the contents coverage is for tangible property, especially in the basement. Right. Exactly. And then in the, uh, in the question there, there was the year of build question, is there a time limit? Is there a restriction on certain year of build? There is not. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, that catches us up for now. Keep those questions coming, but uh, go ahead guys, continue. Perfect, so we went ahead and selected the elite tier here. And as you can see underneath the tiers, you have the option to download quote, download the quote selected, which would be the elite, or email the quote selected. If you download, it downloads it in a PDF, and then of course you can just email it to your client. If you hit email quote selected, it's going to email it to that email address that you put on the prior screen. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue here. And on the next screen, you're basically going to answer the additional questions that are needed to finalize the application. So we don't ask these questions up front because they're not needed to give you a quote. So the idea is to be able to get in and get out quickly, get your quote, present it. If you're able to sell it, then you log back into the system, pull up that quote, and then answer these additional questions. Um, a couple of things to point out on this screen. We do have a, as you can see there, the add mortgagee where you can add up the three mortgagees if needed. Um, we ask for the insurer's mobile number. Um, we do use that for communication as well. We do text campaigns when there is approaching storms, just another way to alert the client. Um, also, if you scroll down to the bottom there for me, Naomi, if you answer yes to any of these questions, it's likely you won't be able to get a quote because again, we don't do commercial property. We do not do mobile homes at this point in time. No condo units, nothing in the course of construction, cannot be over water or seaward of mean high tide which for those of you that aren't sure, which you guys don't have that issue in Pennsylvania, <laughs> but if you have a home that's over land, but when high tide comes in, it's over water, we would not insure those. Um, and cannot have two or more flood losses in 10 years or a single loss over 100,000. So it is important to note here that there is opportunity to place property with us that might have a small prior loss. Most companies, if not all other companies, do not accept any prior loss activity. And we do not do any condemned property property. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. And I think I saw a couple of other questions come in. So you want to grab those or? Yeah, let's do that yeah. again, pertinent to, to what you just discussed. <laughs> the two questions kind of along the same, you know, restrictions, coastal restrictions, but specifically coastal barrier resource areas. Uh, are, you, are you writing there? We are not at this point in time. Okay. So, you know, Cobras are, like you just said, they're usually along the coast, protected areas. They're usually placed in like an ENS, like not a, a company that, like us. You know what I mean? I'm not sure. right to say that, but yeah, we don't do those at this point in time. Okay. 
but when you talk about other states either that you're in or when you consider moving to or writing in Maryland, Delaware, coastal normally is not an issue? Correct. Again, we're using single risk modeling. So some of those may not rate well in the private sure. market. And of course, those are better off left in the NFIP, which brings up a good point. So if you guys, if you gain access to this product and you start with this quote first and you get that outlook report and we're not competitive, you can use that outlook report to help tell the story to the, you know, to your client of the need to still buy flood insurance and use that in turn to sell the NFIP that we offer. So, and remember that even in an X zone situation, there's times when we're not competitive with the NFIP in the X zone, because again, just because it's marked as low risk from FEMA, it doesn't mean there's no risk there. So if those don't model well, and your client's sitting in there saying, well, the lender's not requiring me to carry it. Hopefully the realtor didn't tell them they didn't need it. But if you can show them the outlook report and they can see for themselves the risk they face from a company that you know, has 3 trillion data elevation points, which is a real number for us that we've compiled to better paint the picture of their risk, it's in, in turn going to help you in selling more flood. Excellent. Yeah, great point there. Uh, one, one other one, and then we can continue. Replacement cost. Cost is that available on personal property as well? It is actually in the uh, enhanced in the elite tier. We do provide replacement costs on contents. And Naomi, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that both tiers, right? We don't do yes. it in the essential. Correct. Okay. Yep. Because NFIP does not. So if you're looking exactly. at apples to apples, it's that makes sense so but uh, those elite and that's the advantage here is the ability to select different different levels that is good so um all right go ahead naomi sorry continue a couple others coming in but we'll pick those up as, yeah. as we go here no problem go ahead. so so as i mentioned in our uh, slide presentation you do have the payment options <clears throat> at the bottom so we're going to just select annual here but you see we offer semi-annual quarterly and monthly and we're gonna to proceed to buy. And now on this screen, it's just confirming the coverage plan that you selected. So again, we selected the elite package and here's where you can select how you wish to pay. And you can of course do the one-time credit card or ACH or pay by check. If you selected payment options, of course, payment options do come along with fees that are just a pass through to our uh, billing company. And then from here, if you complete purchase, this is actually going to give you your full policy package and including that instant deck page. So the policy package will include any required forms for you to complete. So in Pennsylvania, I don't know the exact um, rules there, but I'm pretty sure that they're a diligent effort state. So the diligent effort form will print and it's pre-filled. Um, I don't know if you guys, I think Massachusetts is the only one that requires the insured to sign. But nonetheless, we give you the full package of everything that we need that we'll print off in a PDF. <clears throat> and Naomi will show you here in just a moment. And again, apologize for it running a bit slow in the test environment. But if you access the policy package, that's where you would get the deck page. So that's how easy it is. I did a lot of talking as we went through it, but you can see how quickly you can get in and out of our system and, and get your quote. Um, I don't know if you can pull that up, Naomi. Mm -hmm. Just so they can see that deck page. And then we could spend the, the rest of the time we have together answering any questions that you guys have. So yeah, there's a... Good note for uh, anybody on the webinar, submit any questions you may have now. There's a couple that we can touch on, but uh, you guys concluded there. Naomi, you have up what you need to? Yeah, it's not pulling up, Naomi, so you probably have to stop sharing and then reshare. Yeah. When you have those attachments, for some reason, it doesn't. Yeah, it does that. We've had that experience too. So if you want to try that, you can. We'll uh, answer a couple questions. Um, there you go. So this oh, is there we what go. I was referring go ahead. to. Yep. Yep. So this is the, the deck page that you get, and this is before you even made the payment. So um, very unique to the industry. There's not many that are giving the uh, front deck page. Um, so this is very helpful for your lenders that are requiring a copy of the deck page. And speaking of lenders, it is important to note again that, you know, we're better than the NFIP. 
So even in our essential, it's, it's better than. So not just broader, it's better than the NFIP. So lenders will accept it. The only ones that are not accepting it at this point, and that's soon to change from what I've heard, um, and some buzz out there is FHA loans are still not accepting private flood. Other than that, lenders should have no issues with it. Um, Naomi was kind enough to pull up the application that includes the policy jacket so you can see the definition of flood there, which again is a bit broader. It doesn't have that two mile uh, definition right. as part of it. So um, what other questions did you have? And I know a few have come in. Yeah, a few have come in. Um, first is, do you provide downloads to the agency management systems? If so, what platforms? But you're providing, just as an appointed agent, you're providing these downloads right into the agency AMS, correct? Not at this point for this product. We do for the NFIP, for the federal flood that you'll have okay. access to. But for the private, we are in discussions with Ivan's as we speak. Um, so we are going to have download capabilities by the end of this year. Okay. Um, but as it stands right now, we do not have download capability. And that is typical from our experience of most private flood applications because of the nature of those. So um, That's I correct. believe you guys are a step ahead with having that conversation with Ivan and doing that. Um, another question is if a client perhaps does not have email and or cell phone, is that going to preclude them from eligibility? I know you were collecting that information, but, but in those cases where they don't, what, what, how is that treated? Yeah, if they don't have their own email address, they could put in the agents, just understanding that they're going to get the renewal generated to the agent, which they get copied on it anyways. So I don't think it would be, it's not a deal killer by any means. We just okay. encourage you to put the customer so we have it so we can make sure that when it renews that they get a copy of the bill that goes out to the agent. Okay. That's the main reason for it. Yep, that makes sense, sure. Uh, is there ability for electronic signature for your documents? Is that something kept on file? But do you support electronic signatures in this process? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Naomi, I don't know if you, is it DocuSign that we have or? Yes. Yeah. Good. DocuSign, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. All right. They're very helpful. And then a final one about just the submission process, website login. So again, the process is if this is of interest to you and hopefully you guys are as impressed with Beyond Floods as we are. We, we knew we wanted a private flood uh, market within IMS. That's you know kind of the quintessential when you think about market access and where we're going. Um, we were extremely imp impressed with this process and the ease of going through it. So should you have interest, remember it's the application process through IMS. Um, go to imsaccess.com. You will see a application apply now process. And yeah. Do you want to pull that up, Naomi? Or, or do you want to pull it up, Jason, and show them? Or um, it, I guess I need to. It, yeah, it's extremely simple. Just yeah. uh, imsaccess.com, and and you will see the state listings. You will you select your individual state and the apply now button, and then it covers those four areas that I talked about. That four page application. That allows the information to go to Beyond Floods for their quick review. Nine times out of 10, maybe 99 times out of 100, you're going to get that thumbs up to say, yes, you are approved. And thank you very much. Quick. See how quick these guys are? <laughs> um, that gives you the thumbs up. And then at that point, guys, that's when the agency will receive their unique login to the platform that you just reviewed and they're able to go in and begin quoting, correct? It really is that simple. That's correct. Yep. Yep. So and, uh, uh, go ahead. And I guess Pat somebody up. asked again about commercial. So yeah, that came up are, again. Our goal right now is to get our residential product in all states and then we're focusing on commercial. So my best guess would be late 2021 or early 2022. But if yeah. you have commercial risk um, and you don't have an outlet for it, of course you could place it in the NFIP. You know, we do offer again, NFIP access as well with this appointment. Um, and as a reminder, that's through Torrent. I don't go into that because our focus is really on our Beyond Floods product. And truth be told, there's about 30 companies that use Torrent's platform. So you guys are probably familiar with it from other write your own carriers like like us. Mm -hmm. But if you're not, you act, you request access, Naomi will walk you through both platforms, whatever we need to do to get you comfortable with the product. Excellent. 
There was another question, just IMS logistics. Does everybody in the agency need to apply for access? That is the individual license. So if you have a producer within your agency that you feel will be writing within this, uh, we would just need a copy of that individual producer license. Those who you feel will be writing through IMS access in addition to the agency license. But again, you do that once as part of the application process. And it's probably best to um, be broad in, in, in those producers that you were signing up for IMX so that they have that access, just as any carrier would want information if they were going through the appointment process. But again, doing that once, selecting the states, we had the question, um, multiple states, we have to apply for multiple states. In your case, you showed uh, all the states that you're in, uh, an agency has access to write in those non-producer or a non-resident license. And once they're approved by you, they can write across the spectrum, correct? That is correct. Yeah, so we, we try to make it easy, a one-time application process, select those carriers that you want and you have access to this platform that Naomi ran, ran through, showed you guys. So exactly. that is the questions okay. for now. Is there anything in conclusion that you guys wanted to cover? No, we really appreciate everybody joining today and we look forward to uh, getting you guys onboarded and working with you and helping you grow your flood book. Yeah, thank you guys for the time. Again, impressive. Uh, we the, the point of IMS was to make it easy for our members to get additional access. Uh, you guys have shown that. So, so thank you for that. To the members, again, this has been recorded. We will be providing the slides that you saw today. So you will have that within, um, give us 24 hours to get that out to everybody, uh, along with the, the questions that were asked. If at any time you have additional questions, be it beyond floods, IMS in general, you had the contact information for Tim Wonder at our office. He is happy to answer anything. Should you have specific questions for Beyond Floods, we will be sure to get those to Chad and Naomi for answering if you have any questions afterward. But guys, thank you for your time. Members, thank you for your time. Please explore IMS. This is built for you. Uh, we believe a win-win for everybody. Should you have any comments or requests from IMS, submit those to us. But Thank you, everybody, for your time today. Uh, Chad, Naomi, thanks again for a wonderful presentation. We will we'll be getting members your way. Awesome. Thank you for having great. us. We appreciate yep. it. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Great week, Thank you. Take care. Bye.